and I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, just want to give you guys the gospel real quick, and I just want to do a quick video. Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose again from our justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead. Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future, and to reconcile us back to God. Okay? What well, God commands is that we believe this testimony concerning his son, his death, burial, resurrection, and his shed blood that on the cross was to accomplish what? Paying for all of our sin debts, guys. All of it, past, present, and future. Wiped clean for all those who will receive this free gift of salvation. Salvation is right here presented freely to you. All you have to do is believe what Christ has done for you. That's it. All he did and accomplished, he did for you. I'm talking to you right now. If you have not believed the gospel, once you have believed, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? And you will never lose your salvation because God doesn't give a temporary salvation. He gives eternal life. Okay? His suffering on the cross was not temporary. It was a painful death that he had to pay on our behalf for the sins of the whole world upon himself. So that's not a temporary thing. It is something that's done once and for all, and it's permanent, okay? It is something that you get to receive on his account. What he accomplished, you get credited on his account, okay? Freely to you, just by believing in, you know, in the gospel and what he did for you, okay? So I want to talk about something real quick, because um, I know a lot of people focus so much on admonishment, you know? <sighs> And I mean, you know, people like to say, oh, you guys, you know, you, you just preach about Christ and just enjoying Christ. What about sin? What about sin? First of all, why am I thinking about sin if I'm enjoying Christ? I'm not understanding that. Why will I be doing that? Like, help me, help me make sense of that. Why is sin even a, a discussion when you are in the presence of Christ and enjoying him? Why? Second of all, the old time said, well, the New Testament has all these admonitions in it. Yes, he did. But do you even know the purpose of that? Did you think that Paul would just went to sleep, woke up and say, I'm just going to write and tell him all this stuff. Hey, you don't be doing this. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is how you should do this. Too. That's not what he's doing, though. You see, Pauline Epistle, if you actually read the book of Acts and then go read the Pauline Epistle, you realize a lot of letters he was writing was based on reports that he was getting of the people who were supposed to be saved, how they were acting. So he had to write these epistles, a lot of times the admonition for correction, to correct them and remind them who they are in Christ and who they are not. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? That is the purpose of the admonition, you know, that you see in scriptures, okay, to the church, to remind them. You don't just tell people randomly, hey, you better not, do, 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 do. that's not it. If you haven't got a report that someone is doing something, what are you admonishing? Your job is to encourage and build people up. Until you get a report that they were doing something that they ain't got no business doing as a body of Christ, then you render admonishment. That's how that works. That was how he wrote the letters. He wasn't just writing letters just to write it because he woke up today and be like, hmm, let me write to the church in Corinth. Let me write to the church in Ephesus. Let me write to the church in Thessalon. I'm just going to write to the church in Galatians because I'm feeling like writing and just telling them off today. That's not it, guys. You know, the purpose of his admonishments in scriptures is in response to what he has heard concerning the church in that particular area that he wrote the epistles to. Okay. And we can apply the same model based on the same principle. So, you don't just start calling people out over something that they haven't done. You see what I'm saying? If someone is doing something that they ain't got no business doing, okay, and as a believer, you go to them in admonishment to counsel and say, hey, look, you know, this is not who you are in Christ, you know? This is not your identity. You are walking beneath who you are. God has elevated you, okay, and you're still walking in a dead flesh, which is down here. You can't do that. You need to come to recognize who you are in Christ 
And the only way you can do that is by what? Renewing your mind. Learning of Christ. Feasting in the pasture. When you in the house and you're feasting in the house, you don't need to sit here and try to worry about what's going on outside the house. You're in the house enjoying Christ. That's what's important, guys, you know? It's like people, just, they just can't help themselves. You just talk about sin. You just talk about sin. That's all you talk about is sin. How, how does that help anyone? If someone is not doing what you're talking about, what does that do to help them? What we do is you're supposed to build each other up and encourage them. Admonishment is good and needed when it needs to be said. Just because someone is not speaking in admonishment to other people doesn't mean they're not. For example, my post concerning the rapture date setters was an admonishment to them because that's not right, you know? I wouldn't just randomly say stuff just because if no one is doing it. I mean, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's the purpose of admonishment, you know? I can only talk about something that I'm aware of. If I'm not aware of what someone is doing, then guess what? The person that's aware of it needs to, you know, address that individual, you know? I don't understand why y'all so get hung up on sin. How about you put all that energy in Christ and hang up on Christ? Let's see how much sin you think about. If you devote the same energy trying to talk about sin 24-7, oh, well, we don't think about sin 24-7. It don't really make a difference to me, you know? If you devote that much energy focusing on sin instead of Christ, well, maybe you could shift that energy from focusing so much on sin and focus on Christ so you can actually enjoy happiness instead of full of bitterness because you're looking at everyone else and to you, they must be doing all kind of crazy stuff because you are walking so faithful. But you don't even know their life. You don't live with them. You don't know nothing about them. See, people portray whatever they want on the internet for you to see, but you don't know the truth about someone unless you actually know that person. Guys, admonishment that's written in scripture is not just written for just people just to tell them off or just to, just, just to speak, just to speak. No, it is needed when it needs to be applied. Learn how to apply scripture when it's needed, okay? For example, a person who is not sick doesn't need a doctor. I can't go to a person who is well and say, you need to go see a doctor. For what? It doesn't matter. Go see a doctor. Because, because, because I know for a fact, I know for a fact that you're sick. I mean, do you see how crazy I sound? That's what some of you sound like when you're doing that. You can't do that. Admonishment is good. When you're actually addressing something to admonish, someone means something you are aware of or has been brought to your attention, okay? That's different, you know? But if it's something that you're just rambling just because you're mad at you know, or you, in your mind, you think everybody is sending it up, you know what I'm saying? You're the only one that, you know, that's just working so perfect, you know, with your new heart and all that stuff, you know? <laughs> Come on, guys. When is enough enough? Don't you ever get tired? I don't know. I'm like mentally tired with all the, like, nonsense, yo. I ain't got time for all that, man, you know? Anyway, please understand admonishment in scriptures written is actually written based on on reports that the writer have received. So he wrote those admonishments and not to deny their salvation as brethren, but to remind them who they are in Christ and who they are not. Okay? But not only that, even he said when you admonish them to not forget that they are your brethren. Okay? That means don't deny their salvation. But many people don't even know how to admonish for one. And secondly, they like to claim that born-again believers are not saved. I just can't stand you all, man. I can't wait for the rapture so all this can be over because... Anyway, y'all have a blessed day. Peace.